Same slide, thank you. And Halle, 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 Hallelujah, Halle, 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 Hallelujah, Halle, 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 Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And without music, and Halle, Halle, Halle. Have a seat. Well, there is not a place I would rather be this morning than here. So it is a delight for me to be here, and on behalf of the church, I welcome all those who have been here for decades. And those who got up and said, maybe I will go to church this morning. We're glad you're here. Um, We have friendship pads, and we invite you to fill them out. Are the friendship pads, yeah, they're in the middle aisle. So we invite people to grab them, fill them out, and send them over. And we um, have our greeting now. Is that where we greet one another? Did they move that up? Okay, well then, let's all greet one another. seats. Are we ready? Okay. Will you please rise and won't we do the call to worship. Sing praises to God who created the heavens and the earth. Lift up your voices and hands to God, who is worthy of praise. Come 
Center your hearts on Christ, who calls upon us to love one another. Let us remain standing and open up to him page 443, O Christ the Great Foundation, or the words are on the screen. Congregation may be seated. Ladies. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for the time to gather. We, we thank you for the opportunity to come and worship. You have invited us. And we thank you for the ability to worship with Christians all over the world, uh, people of all faith, that, that we might worship you, that we might fully understand your glory and the power and your mighty, mighty love. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Join me in praying the prayer of brokenness and confession. God of wisdom, we all dwelled in foolish ways, turning away from you to follow the desires of the world. We have sought worldly gain over the needs of our brothers and sisters. We have given in to anger, hate, and fear rather than compassion and mercy. We have jumped to conclusions rather than waiting patiently to learn. Forgive us for tagging along to the ways of the world and turn us back to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The assurance of pardon. Where can we go from God's spirit? Where can we flee from God's presence? There is no place that is too far for God to find us. No place that is too dark for God's light not to shine. We are God's beloved. God will seek us all the days of our lives. We are forgiven, loved, and restored. Amen. Amen. children to come forward. going to be fun because I am going to make all the people who work so hard to set this church up and make it look pretty mad. So, who wants a grape? Okay, let's see. Is that a grape you think you want to eat? Is that a grape you think you want to eat? No, you better watch out because these older, wiser people do not want to eat these grapes. So what's wrong with these grapes? I'm kidding. <laughs> what's wrong with these grapes? Yeah. They're plastic. That's right. They're pretty. They're way prettier than the grapes I have in my refrigerator. But I would be foolish to eat them because they're, no, you don't get to eat one because it would taste bad. It's, it's just plastic. Oh, yeah. And not only that, but to make it worse, I didn't even bring you real grapes. <laughs> so the thing is, have you ever had that experience where something looks like it's going to be really great, but then it isn't? Yeah? Me too. Me too. And I'm thinking about that because today... 
One of the things we talk about is the Holy Spirit. Did I put it in the wrong place and did it fall? Oh, well. I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit here for a minute because the Holy Spirit is God. It's God who comes down and fills us up. So, when we have God's Spirit inside of us, we're like real grapes. We're like the grapes in my refrigerator that you can eat and they taste good. Who likes grapes? I do. Yeah, they taste good. You don't like them? That's okay. You're allergic? Oh, that's the worst. But, but sometimes, sometimes I feel like one of those plastic grapes. Sometimes I feel like I need God's spirit inside me. So like I came in here this morning, people will know. Someone said to me, Marianne, you're like a ray of sunshine in the church. And I said, well, today I feel more like a storm cloud. But... But Lonnie prayed with me. She prayed with me and she asked for God's calming presence to be inside of me. And when Lonnie asks something like that, then God listens. That's the good news. And so I got, I got that, that Holy Spirit. And that's what's helping me to be here and helping me to do what I do. So all of us, we need that. We need the things on the outside. But we also need that inner presence. And sometimes we're like that plastic grape. And we might look okay, but we know inside <gasps> we're not there. But sometimes God does it. God will put his spirit in you. And you'll feel happy and joyous and peaceful. And then the outside and the inside, they're together like a real grape. So that's my prayer, is that all of us can be like, honest to goodness, real grapes. So let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your spirit who fills us up and makes us good. Amen. Well, wasn't that exciting to see all those kids? That was exciting for me because that's got to be twice as many kids, at least, as were coming up when I was here. So, so that is a joy. And we're oh, yeah, prayer. Well, I was just talking about prayer to the kids. And one of the things that we do as corporate prayer is together, we lift up the things we want to pray about, and then we respond, Lord, hear our prayer. And so this is our time to join together and to open ourselves to that spirit pouring on each of us, because we all need it. So what are our concerns for the day? Who do we, who do we pray for? Yes. Okay, Bill's home. He's doing pretty good. So, Lord, hear our praise. Ah. Yes. Yes, uh, my great-granddaughter, Chloe, she's doing a lot better. Oh, good. And, uh, but she still needs prayers. Okay, so what's her name again? Remind me. Chloe. Chloe. So Chloe is doing better, but she continues to need our prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. Yes. I, uh, I just wanted to say praise for my husband's 90th birthday. Ah. And, uh, there's going to be cake and 90th birthday celebration. Lord, hear our praise. Uh, my wife would ask prayers for a friend of hers that she went to school with. Her, um, his mother passed away. So and he's just he's going to be needing our prayers in this time of life. What's his name? Matt. Okay, so for for your friend Matt, whose mother has passed away. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Yes. Okay, so Paula, doing better. So is that a praise or a prayer? A praise and a prayer. So Lord, hear our praise and prayer. Yes, surely. (laughs) Well, I count that as a prayer today. So um, Lord, hear our prayer. Yes, yeah. Mary Ann, a few weeks ago we prayed at the women's retreat for my grandson in Billings, Montana, who was waiting for a bone marrow donor. Right. Two days after that, they found one of his brothers was a match, and he goes October 10th for the procedure. Oh my gosh. In Denver. In Denver? Kelsey is his name. Bone marrow transplant for Kelsey? Yes. And, um, you know, like she said, we had our women's retreat, and we prayed that there would be a match. And there, they found one. That's a praise. And there's still prayers needed. So, again, praise and prayer. Lord, hear our praise and our prayer. Yes. Hurricane who? Oh, so for those in the path of Hurricane Matthew, Lord, hear our prayer. Yes. My mother feels better than she has in four or five months, and I get to spend time with her. That's a praise. Lord, hear our praise. Let us pray. Gracious God, for all of our prayers, spoken and unspoken, we know you hear us. Hear us now as we pray together using the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us remain seated as we sing hymn 377, Lord, you have come to the lake shore.
my boat's left on the shoreline behind me. Now with you, I will seek other seas. pray. Gracious God, as we open your word, we just invite you to open up our hearts. Amen. Our first scripture is from the book of Timothy, and it is centering here on passing down the faith. Timothy 1, 1 through 14. Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus, our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day, I continually remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan in the flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit of God for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death, and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed. What you have heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit, 
who lives in us. And now, from the Gospel of Luke. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to eat? Would he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. So last week I was over at Southminster and one of the ladies grabbed hold of me and said she wanted to talk to me and we were talking and she says, Marianne, I'm having an identity crisis. I think you have to have a, be of a certain age to remember having identity crises. But, um, but she said, I'm having an identity crisis. She's a little older than me and she said, you know, when I was a kid, we just knew that when we got married, we would stay married and have our kids, and that was how it would be, but it's, it's all different now. She said, you know, my daughter came to me, and she said, oh, Mom, I'm pregnant. And then we had to say, well, do you really need to marry this person? Is that really the right thing to do? And she said, they did get married, and it worked okay, but it, it was hard. And she said, it's all, it's all different now. And so the first thing I did is I looked at some scripture. And some of you might be familiar with this from the book of Leviticus. Because in the book of Leviticus, this was what people were supposed to do. Is if a woman was married to a man, and he died, and she did not have a son then it was the job of his brother to give her a son. And I reminded her of that scripture and said, but you would have never done that. And she said, no. And I said, you know, at the time that, that those words were written, there was a reason for that. And the reason was stability. Because it helped keep the tribes together. It helped keep them with their land. So there was someone to inherit that portion of land. And it helped provide security for this woman who otherwise would not have what she needed. And so the reason for that law that seems so strange in our own time was stability. Stability and security. And I said, you know, things have changed. Things have changed in our world. You know, men marry men and women marry women and they struggle just as much as women marrying men struggle because, yes, life, there's always struggles. And yet, and yet, that need for security is as strong as ever. And she said, yeah, you know, it just feels so hard. When I was a girl, she said, my mother told me, Phyllis, you can't steal. Because if you steal, you will make the whole family look bad. And she said, I knew I was a part of a family. And, and we stood together. And what one did mattered to another. And she says, where is that now? And it's funny, I was telling my daughter this whole story, and when I got to that part, she just sat up and went, I feel that! I feel that! And so, so you know, it's not just older people. It's that desire to be a part of a community. And that awareness that we, you know, we could go to the next slide, 
that's my identity crisis slide <laughs> because our identity we don't live as one person and one person and one person we live in relationship to one another and that's why I was so I felt like a world communion Sunday Though it was instituted by people who were tired of war and wanted to say, well, if Christians all over the world understood they were having communion, maybe they wouldn't fight each other. That hasn't worked. But nevertheless, that sense that our community is bigger than our little church, than our little family, than our own lonely self. That is why I love this celebration. As a reminder that yes, we really are a part of a community. And yes, we really are responsible one for another. And that is nowhere more true than for someone like me who chooses to be a pastor. Because people are going to look at me and either say, oh, maybe the church isn't that bad. Or they're going to look at me and say, there you go, they're all a bunch of hypocrites. So my life isn't just my life. My choices reflect upon the church that I chose to serve. Because we're connected one to another. And that is a challenge, being connected. That's why, you know, I've known pastors who've come out west and said, I just don't understand out here. People go to church and then they go home and they don't visit. I don't think that's actually true of this church, but it is true of some churches. Because people forget their connection. The West came into being with this sense of individual power and action. And it plagues us to this day. We are so tempted to forget that we are more than just a bunch of individuals sitting in a room together. And I think one of the reasons it's so easy to forget that is because truthfully, being in communion is not an easy thing. And so I want to go through the next three slides because it's a cartoon. I wish I had enough faith to do great things. Have you ever felt that way? Okay, next. You know, Jesus had just called them to lives of continual forgiveness. That's why they were asking for more faith. He says, I had something easier in mind, like snake handling. And you know, I had to admit that when I was preparing this day for World Communion Sunday, where my mind and heart began to dwell was on another Presbyterian church in this community. And some of you are familiar with their story. And that is Boone. And I thought, you know, it's really easy to open your arms wide and say, yeah, we're all one around the world. But the Boone Church was split in two. And there has been a huge amount of contention about that because the group that left the presbytery took the property. And that is contrary to the rules of our church. And so we spent three and a half years because there was still a group who said, no, I still want to be a part of this denomination. Our denomination said the people who want to be a part of this denomination, that property is theirs. So we've been fighting. It's been a bitter, bitter battle. And I think sometimes the most intense battles are within family. 
You know, they're within the people that you're closest to and the people that you think, why aren't they behaving better? And the truth is, they think that about us as well. They think that they are clearly in the right, and why are we going after them with the law? And so there's this incredible, intense battle. And then I get this little cartoon about forgiveness. And during the same week that I have this little cartoon about forgiveness and how that is related to our faith and such an integral part, I keep having more battles to deal with, and I feel like this guy. Yeah, I think I'm going to put snake handling on my resume. <laughs> and so we, we struggle. We struggle with that question. How and when do we forgive, and what does that mean? No wonder, when confronted with this need for continual forgiveness, they responded instinctively with, Lord, increase our faith. Because staying in a community requires forgiveness. It requires two kinds of forgiveness. One is when we forgive another, and another when we acknowledge that we need to be forgiven. And you know that second, I think, is really much harder. It is so hard for us to say, I was wrong, and I need you to forgive me. And yet, and yet, to maintain our community, we need to be able to do both. We need to be able to say, I was wrong, when we are wrong. That means having the ability to see that and to forgive when someone else is in the wrong. That's not a sermon topic, forgiveness. Because it's complicated. When people are being abused, forgiveness doesn't mean continuing in an, a relationship where they're being abused. Sometimes, before you can forgive, you have to pull out of an abusive relationship. Sometimes, you have to stand up and say, this is what's right, even if someone doesn't like to hear it. Because forgiveness, forgiveness happens between equals. Forgiveness happens when both or all however many hundred sides are committed to staying in relationship. And how can we know and how can we do that? <coughs> Next slide. And we do that because we remember who we are. And who we are is more than just a bunch of individuals. Who we are is more even than a lot of people trying to get along. Who we are, we are children of God. And we celebrate World Communion Sunday to remember, to remember that it is, it is God that holds us together. We are one, not by our own decision, we are one, not by coercion, we are one by grace, by grace. And you know, there's been a lot of conflict in the church in the last, probably 
thousand years, but in, in my lifetime. And I remember telling people, you know, you're going to die, and I'm going to die. And according to our theology, we're going to be in heaven together. So you might as well get used to me now. Because you're going to have to put up with me for eternity. <laughs> so sometimes splits happen. I came in here raging today. Raging. But, but also, the love of God is bigger than my anger. Although sometimes I think not much, but um, bigger than my anger is bigger than whatever injustice I see. It is big enough. Big enough. And maybe it will take all eternity. But the unity that we claim, it's not ours. It's not ours to break. It's not ours to hold together. It belongs to God. When you are struggling with the people that you love so much, I invite you to remember that greater love and that greater unity. Thanks be to God. the opportunity to return to God a portion of all that God gives to us.
Let us join now in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our God, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and I invite those who are serving communion to come forward. Just be seated. I invite you to join with me in this blessing for World Communion Sunday. And the table will be wide. And the table will be wide. And the table will be wide. And the arms will open wide to gather us in. And our hearts will open wide to receive. And we will come as children who trust there is enough. And we will come unhindered and free. And our aching will be met with bread. And our sorrow will be met with wine. And we will open our hands to the feast without shame. And we will turn toward each other without fear. And we will give up our appetite for despair. And we will taste and know of delight. And we will become bread for a hungering world. And we will become drink for those who thirst. And the blessed will become the blessing. And everywhere will be the feast. Here we are. The feast of the people of God. Celebrated everywhere. Just as Jesus taught us. Let us pray. Gracious God, you sent your son Jesus, who had and has many hard sayings for us, telling us boldly that we must forgive not seven times, but seven times seventy, and acting out that forgiveness on the cross in the face of your own death, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And you, O oh God, who live in us, bring to us that love and that ability to love others. And so in this feast, we invite you to fill us 
with your love. Amen. Jesus, celebrating the Passover, remembering how God delivered the Hebrew slaves from Egypt and the covenant that they had together. And at the end of that feast, surrounded by his so unworthy disciples, Judas, who would leave that meal and betray him, Peter, who three times over would say, I don't know who he is. Those who would fall asleep when he prayed and keep silent when he was condemned. They, they are the foundation of our church. And they were forgiven, and they were empowered to be better. And Jesus, with those people at that time, took bread and broke it saying, this is my body, broken for you. Take eat, remembering me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and poured into it. Saying, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Drink ye all of it. And then he told his disciples, do these things Remembering me until I come again. As you are served your bread, there will be a choice of breads from around the world, from the Middle East, from Europe. And you are invited to take any bread, knowing that they are all one and to hold on to it, that we may eat together, knowing that we also, in Christ, are one body. Let us pray. Oh, I did that.
summer turn golden by the sun. Grapes in bunches cut down when ripe and red are converted into the bread and wine of God's love in the body bread of life. to take the cup and as you are ready to drink remembering that God loves you and has called you by name
with this cup, with this loaf. We remember that you are the bread for our hunger and that you meet all our deepest thirst. Amen. Let us stand and open up to him, page 514. Let us talents and tongues employ. Now go and spread the word. Amen. <laughs>